My name is Steve Winter and I've been a contributing photographer with National Geographic for over 20 years. Wired has challenged me to take what I have learned about photographing big cats in the wild to photographing a domestic cat. Today I'm gonna to show you my process for going from 112 photos down to only one. For my first edit, I'm gonna edit for technical issues, whether it's too dark, too light, things like that. So here we go. It just happens to be photo number one. This image is underexposed. Bye-bye. One thing you have to look for when you're depending on the exposure in the background, that a big cloud doesn't come over and all of a sudden you're two to three stops off. So let's see, what would the next one be? This one here is a little under. I kind of like the movement in it, but it's underexposed. Light didn't go off. Underexposed, underexposed, underexposure on the cat's face. Underexposed, another underexposure. Underexposed, underexposed. If we're coming on a situation in the field, as we're speeding up to that location, I will just take a out of focus shot just to check it. I'll set the camera the way I think it should be and then I'll do a test shot and adjust accordingly. This one is overexposed. No good and overexposed. Overexposed. And overexposure. Overexposed. Overexposed in the bottom. Overexposed. Overexposed. That concludes the first edit. All right, in the second edit, we're looking at issues like cutting off parts of the animal because it moved and just uncomfortable positions that the cat was in. From the beginning of my career at Nat Geo, it was like, don't cut off part of the animal. Now, sometimes it's very difficult when you have a big cat with a long tail, but it makes you think in new compositional ways. All right, let's see here. Classic example, part of its tail is cut off. Here again, it's just cutting off part of the animal. Same situation, cutting off parts of the animal, it's gone. And one of the things that you would use is the rule of thirds is so easy because you can cut a horizontal frame into thirds and then a vertical one with two lines. So it makes points in the frame where you could put your subject. This is purely because this toy is in the way of its face. Hand coming in with the toy. The toy, the person, they're in it. The feather's in it, the feather. Feather's in it, feather. The feather's in it, and there's nothing to catch your eyes. You have to see the eyes. This is all about emotion. All art is about emotion. And so right away you're identifying with that animal by looking right in its eye. If the face, the eye you're looking at isn't in focus, so you don't have that same connection. I don't like motion blur where you don't have part of the animal that is sharp. And the eye is so incredibly important in most of these images. So as long as the eye's sharp, then it works. The angle of its eyes, the tilt of its head's down a little bit. It looks like it's looking at a mouse that's getting ready to kill. And I don't like the look on its face, it's kind of evil. It may work for a Hallmark card about being bummed out or something, but it doesn't work here. This is a tough one to take down, but you have to make tough choices. We have to get to that point in our whittle down session here, so it's not good enough. That concludes edit two. We have a lot more to do, and most of them have come from the second half of the shoot. Composition is so very important, and I was taught that at a very young age. As soon as an image feels clunky, you're gonna know it. You just have this clunky composition that works for part of you as your eye moves through the frame and then it stops. You can crop it. I started with film where there really was no cropping. I try to compose within the frame of the camera. And I think if you do that, you'll become a better photographer. So let's see what does not work. 
One thing you need to look for is how tight you are on your subject. Do you have enough to the city to tell the story that you'd like to tell? Some of these buildings are architecturally very interesting. We need to see that, the up and down, the graphic effect. And you can see the air duct here, which adds nothing. And so you're learning that as you're shooting. And it's go, I don't really like that. I'm going to back up a little bit. And so that helped me here. The same situation, not good enough, not good. We've got a better one. They're two very similar images. I'm trying to place the cat in kind of a negative space here, but you have these modern buildings, the older one here, and whether it clashes with the cat and the angle. The angle is very important in the end because you don't really want to look down on an animal except when I was trying to get a compositional effect because it takes away their power. When you're trying to tell a story about a big city cat sitting in the window, you want to get down a little bit so you have the same level as the windowsill because the windowsill is not important. A lot of times when I do my remote cameras, I will have them at eye level or below. And it really changes your psychological perspective of how you view that cat. That concludes edit three. We have 28 images left on the board. For edit four, we're gonna start looking at the story of this cat and its home. You'll look at a complex painting and your eye is moving around the whole canvas. In a well-composed photograph, you want your eye to move around the canvas and in one single image to tell a story. So here we go. This one is interesting because it actually shows some greenery outside the window, but at the end, it's a very confined image and doesn't really tell us very much. Another one, the same thing, just too tight on the cat. We're starting to see that we're not getting the same feel about the story of the cat looking out the window when it's sitting looking into the room. So those are gone. And all art is about emotion. And so right away you're identifying with that animal by looking right in its eye, or at least being able to see it. Another one, the same thing. Some people might go, wow, these are really nice. And they're not bad, they show the cityscape, but they're all similar. And there's not enough of the element of the cat's home. Same thing, here we go, one, two, three, four, five, bye-bye. I wanted to get that movement picture, so here's the cat's paw up there. Again, just too tight on the cat, and we're not telling enough of the story. I kind of like the graphics of this in the background, in the wall, and the three wooden blocks that the cat is sitting on, but there's one I like better. Too similar to another image. This is a toughie, but there's other ones that, are, that have the same kind of graphics. We have other ones that are similar, so we have to make some hard choices. So I think we're actually getting down to the final images. For edit five, what I'm looking for is behavior and moments that I may capture something unexpected. I think in many instances, you, you may have a preconceived notion in your mind of what you remember and what image you think is going to be the one that's going to be the best. But as you go through them, there'll be things that surprise you, especially if there's action involved. You may not even know that you got something you did. Graphically, it all fits. You see the wooden block, just perfect with the shadow back here. And I think it works and it's the cat that kind of reaching for something. So it's got a little bit of behavior to it, but it's not going to be the number one or two best images from the shoots, bye bye. These are really tough. I just saw one we took out that I want to put back in. The reason I like this one in a way is because it's like the person playing with the cat is trying to teach it how to be a conductor. And so there's certain elements I like, but it doesn't work. The reason that I probably like this is because I work with big cats and seeing it walk down is to me totally reminiscent of like a lion or a tiger or a leopard walking down a hill, a rock, or something. Does it tell me a little bit more about the life of this cat? And it doesn't, so it's gone. This 
I like the fact, and this is important photographically and compositionally, to take a scene that you're shooting one way and shoot it completely different, which is shoot straight down on it. So it's just something to always remember, that you do have knees, you can lay on your stomach, you can step on a chair or a ladder and shoot things differently. These are very graphic images that I kind of liked as showing this cat in its element very spare and showing shadows in the background. I kind of like this because I like the way it was turned. Its tail is coming down this way. And boy, you talk about something being subjective. There'll be people that's like, you pick the wrong one. Keep this one and put this one aside. All right, I want to say here that I am torn between these two pictures here. In this one, I kind of like the fact that this older architectural building is here. I love the fact that you can see the park here. I consciously, after photographing the cat with the buildings there, made this very simple. It's not as complex. It doesn't tell as deep of a story. But if right now, photographically, I like this one better than this. Now we are down to our final two images and our final decision. This is tough because we have two similar views of the cat, extremely similar. It's sitting there looking off, kind of aloof. I really love the design of this spare home, white walls, beautiful shadow. But I also am really taken by the image of the cat with the buildings in the background. For my final decision, the image that I am going to choose one out of 112. I love it. It tells a story. It's ripping my heart to leave that there. But photographically, this is my favorite image. I love the graphics of it. That beautiful, almost flower-like design on the wall and the cat sitting there looking out. We don't know what it's doing, where it's at, but it's a beautiful design image that spoke to me today. So every day is a school day, and as we edit, we learn what we can do next time, and that's what's very important. We're becoming more visually literate all the time. Shoot and learn from the photographs that you like and the ones that you dislike, because tomorrow you'll be a better photographer.